Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning. We appreciate you being out in the house of the Lord for our Tuesday morning truths, our discipleship lessons that we've been on. And you remember we've talked about uh, salvation. We've talked about that for 10 or 11 lessons, I think. And then we talked about grace for a couple lessons. And today we're going to move on to a new lesson. But appreciate everybody being out. We're down a couple of folks today. Got people in the hospital and uh, surgery and stuff like that. Doctor's appointments. But we appreciate everybody that's out. Appreciate those that are on and watching this morning. Hope that you'll go ahead and like it and share it out if you would. Miss Ann, good to have you out this morning. Good to have you out this morning. What in the world's wrong with Big D back there? Oh. Huh? Anyhow, anyhow, good to see you out. Good to see you out. Couple announcements today. Don't forget today, be safe, stay hydrated. The real field is supposed to go up to 115 today. And man, it was hot yesterday. It was about 113 real feel. Last night, by almost dark, it was still over 100, I think, 100, 101. And, uh, but John said that's why we came to Florida. Amen? So he loves it. And we love it. And some people tolerate it. Birthdays today. Pastor Brooks. Happy birthday to Pastor Brooks out yonder in, in Internet land. We love Pastor Brooks. He'll be back with us in a couple weeks. Miss Jean's going to be gone for a couple weeks, and uh, Pastor Brooks will be here on Sunday morning and Sunday night leading the music and being with us, and, and uh, we appreciate him coming over and staying. He's he, he staying with y'all, Evelyn, those, those two Sundays, two weeks, Pastor Brooks, so don't forget that. And then Kevin's going to lead the music on the Wednesday nights while she's gone, so that, that, uh, that's good. We've got that take care. Speaking of Kevin, Kevin has a birthday tomorrow. So, Mr. Kevin, happy birthday to you. Uh, Julie, don't you forget uh, tomorrow is his birthday. Prayer request. Don't forget to pray at 320 every day. And uh, don't forget to pray for our country and our church. Boy, I tell you what, isn't it amazing what God's doing in our church? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I thought this morning, now I'm going to make a comment here, and hopefully it'll go over good. People talk about hard preaching. But I tell you, it can't get it much harder than it's been. And it hadn't hurt anybody yet. People keep coming and people keep getting saved and keep people keep joining the church. Bible preaching won't hurt you. Amen? Now, if you don't want to live right, it might it might scuff you up a little bit. But if you want to live right and get close to the Lord, Bible preach you can't preach too hard. You can't preach too hard uh, if people want to do right. And I think I think we're seeing that right here as an evident factor right here. So thank God for all he's doing. Let's continue to be warm and welcoming. We've got people coming through that door every week that we don't know what they're going through. We don't know the problems they're facing. We don't know the battles they fought. We don't know where they've come from. We don't know what they've been involved in. But we need to love them, yes. and we need to be good to them, yes. and let God give God a chance. Amen. God is, can make all the difference in the world. Made a difference in my life. Yes. Can you pray for our country? Our country's in a mess. Pray for Nina. I saw where she had uh, shown uh, the video. You see that where she had uh, had just been there, where a place had got blown up, and uh, pray for them as she ministered to the Ukraine. And uh, boy, I like what she said on the other day. She said, you know, could talk, talk about remember that when communism was in Russia had control of the Ukraine, and man, they don't want to go back under that. God bless those people over there. Amen. Pray for Sebby and Stacy. I got to talk to him a long time yesterday and his ministry and health, their daughter and granddaughter's going on. Brother Cliff and Miss Shirley's gone today. He's having surgery. He ought to be having surgery in there right now for a pinched nerve. And we just pray that uh, Cliff is doing well. I got to talk to him last night, pray with him. Pray for Mike Johnston as he recuperates from a dog attack. Man, I tell you, I tell you well, he was a mess Sunday, man. Uh, he might not be able to even move today. But to pray for him, Miss Joanne's sick and not feeling well. Uh, Kathy just talked to her a little bit ago. Debbie Skaggs is having a knee replacement tomorrow. Sherry Snyder is scheduled for hip replacement on the 18th. Becky Clendenin is having a heart, had a heart valve surgery, and she has been moved down to a step-down unit. 
So thank God for that. Roxanne, praise God for her. No blockages. Kit Huffman, a little four four uh, year old uh, Stephanie Mercer's cousin, been over for four weeks now, and still last we heard they haven't found out what's wrong with her. Pam Webb, and I messed up by the night. Pam Webb, who just joined up through Pastor Steve by the day, uh, was in a car wreck with her sister. Her sister was in a car wreck. It really got messed up, been in ICU, but Pam was bruised up and got staples in her head. So my sincere apology to you, Miss Pam, and prayers for you and your sister. And then Brian Harrison, who's got pancreatic cancer. Bill said not doing well. Bennett is still recuperating. Roxanne's niece is pregnant with the high risk because of seizures. And then Miss Jean's got surgery in September. Uh, Miss Kim is at home recuperating after being back in the hospital. Uh, Sherry Higginbotham, her daughter Melissa, and her sister Missy needs prayer. Uh, they both got some health issues. Miss Glenn's grandson Andrew is home. No, not, yet. not home. No, okay. but, so he's still in. He's still down at Coral Gables. Okay, so pray for Andrew. Is he, is he a little better? A little. a little better. And how old is he exactly? 14. 14. I know he's 13 or 14, I thought. Pray for Wanda's daughter-in-law, Reagan, who is pregnant and had a stroke, and she is home and had bed rest, and then Leanne and, and, a, and a bunch more folks down through there. As I say every week, if you didn't, if you are not on the prayer list, you got something to be happy about. Amen? So we're going to pray and get ready to get started up. And then get started up. I put everything up on the screen and everything's gotten smaller. Can you tell? <laughs> Let me get, get ready to go here and we'll be ready to go, hopefully. There we go. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you today for each person that's out. And Lord, what a blessing it is to have them out on a Tuesday morning. Lord, thank you for the... Weather, it's it's hot, but Lord, we're thankful we're able to make it. Lord, just pray you help the people today to stay cool and stay hydrated. Lord, we thank you for all the people that are online. Lord, I just saw where Miss Chris just popped on there. Lord, what a blessing to have her with us and, and become a member Sunday night along with those other ladies, Susan and, and Wanda and, and Christy. And Lord, what, what a great thing you're doing in our church, and we praise you for that. We pray that you bless all the names on the prayer list today, Lord. We realize so many people are sick and got problems and needs, and Lord, they need, they need a touch from you. And Lord, we're thankful that we're not on that list today. And Lord, we pray for Cliff as he gets ready or he's in surgery today that everything will go well with him and give him a good full recovery. Bless him and Shirley. And Lord, we just pray for, for them, for Bennett that, that's recuperating from surgery and uh, Becky and Kim and those others. Roxanne has been in the hospital and has surgeries and procedures. Lord, help them today. Lord, help us as we study your word today. Lord, we give you the praise and thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right. Can you see the, you can see it, can't you? Mm -hmm. I see it. Today we're going to start on a big topic, big topic, church membership. You know, with all the new people coming in and, and, and I, 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 I thought, well, we ought, to, we ought to talk about that a little bit and, and see and give people an idea because some people, it used to be, it was just, it was kind of automatic. Some churches baptize you into the membership of the church. We don't do that. We make it a separate step, and I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, later down the road in this lesson, hopefully. But I hope this lesson will be a blessing to you. It'll probably ruffle some people up. Most of my sermons do, as I, you know, but it's Bible. And, uh, you know, we want to be biblical. Uh, you know, we're not concerned about, we're not a club, we're not an organization. And we're the, we're the church of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to be biblical in all that we say and do. Amen? So we want to do that. So when we think about church membership, there are a lot of things that we could say about it. And, I, and I'm, I, I wish I could get this lesson in in one week, but you know how it is. I doubt it, but I'm going to try. So I want to start out with a question. Is church membership important? I mean, you know, hopefully as we go through the lesson, if you, if you don't think it is, maybe you will think it is. But I, I thought, I just thought of this this morning. I thought, well, here's another good question. Why isn't church membership important to, to you? 
You know, we're living in a day and age when a lot of people, they're not, they're not church members in a local church. You know, when the Bible talks about the church in the New Testament, probably 90 some percent of the times it's used, it's talking about a local assembly church, not, not just some church in the sky or as people say, the universal church where, you know, when you get saved, you become a part of the body of Christ. And then you ought to want to join up and become a member of a local church. But I thought, you know, the question is church membership important? But I thought, well, why isn't church membership important? Maybe somebody's got some answers to that. I don't know. But we're living in a day and a time when many question that if it's important. You know, they question that. They don't, they don't, they don't see a need for it. I hope by the time I get through this lesson that you say, wow, I see a need for church membership. Or maybe you can come up with a reason why maybe it's not necessary. It'd be hard to refute what I'm going to say, but you might be able to do it or at least give it a good shot. I want to give you some reasons why I think it's important. So that brings, that, that I want to start out, does being a member of a church save you? No. No. I think, I think there's a, I think there's a fallacy today. I think there's always been a fallacy. That people believe because they're a church member, that automatically makes them saved and on their way to heaven. I, that, that's not that's not true because sadly, many people who are members of a church die lost and go and go to hell. There's a typo right off the bat, and go to hell. Isn't that going to be sad? If you remember when Jesus talked, a lot of times, a lot of his stern warnings were to religious people who should have known better who should have been saved, who should have known Jesus Christ. Man, he, remember Jesus told him remember those words, that, you shall receive the greater damnation. I think hell's going to be a shock to a lot of church members. You know, you can be a good church member and not be saved. You can keep the rules, regulations that a lot of churches got all these rules, rights, all that stuff. You can keep that and, and say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a member in good standing. That doesn't, that doesn't make you saved. Being saved is what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So pay attention to these next couple slides because I want to talk about even before we get into the lesson, a couple of things. And and I hope you'll I hope you'll listen and and, and it, maybe if you got comments, we'll talk about it at the end. But number one, I want to say you don't have to be a member of a church to be saved. I remember years ago as a young preacher, I called this preacher friend of mine and I asked him a question. And I wanted to see what he would say. And I said, I, I said, I said, hey, I said, let me ask you a question. Do you have to be a member of a church to be saved? And boy, he started him hawing. And, uh, uh, and I said, yeah, right there, told me enough I need to know right there. He thought you did have to be. At least he was trying to tell me. That. You don't have to be a member of a church to be saved. There are probably people all over the world in some of these foreign countries and some of these places that have been saved and accepted Jesus and missionaries come by. It, it may not even know anything about a local church. So you can't say you have to be a member of a church to be saved. If you, if you say that, then you're adding works to salvation. It's like adding baptism to salvation. Anything that you add beyond Jesus is, is false. You don't have to do anything to be saved but accept Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. You don't have to you don't have to do this. I remember one time I asked a guy one time, I said, What do you have to do to be saved? And it's like he dropped down a scroll. I mean he started he started man naming me a, a list of stuff. I said, Wow. I said, What are you gonna do if you run into somebody in the hospital that's dying on, on and they need to be saved, want to be saved, you try try to win with the Lord. Well, I don't think he ever did that, to be honest with you, because he didn't believe that. But I believe that. Thief on the cross. He didn't have any baptism. He didn't have any church membership. He had no good works. But boy, he, he called on the one who could save him. Amen? So, one, I just want you to realize, once you say that, you don't have to be a member of a church to be saved. You can be saved and not be a member of a church. Amen? We good with that? Yes. Two, I often say that it's harder to be a member of some churches than it is to go to heaven. And man, that's a problem. I mean, that's an issue. You know, you got to do all the. Da, 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 da. Now, now, I'm going to clarify that statement. I want you to listen to me, and I'm going to clarify this statement. 
I was looking to see if it was somebody at the door. When a person's saved, their life should match up with the Bible. What the Bible calls sin, we must call sin. Amen? So, there, you know, you know, men and people say, well, I'm saved. Well, if you're saved, then your life ought to match what the Bible says. If it doesn't match what the Bible says, then there's, a, there's, there's some issues there that need to be taken care of. And we're going to talk about that in a, in a minute. But it shouldn't be harder. It shouldn't be harder to get into a church. If, if you've been saved and truly saved and, you, and you're living according to this, this Bible, the Word of God, it shouldn't be hard to become a member of a church. It should be easy. It should be almost like automatically go in. You don't have to have a list of rules. You know, I I, I tell people sometimes. You know, we we've got a we've got a we've got a church bylaw. You never know it. You never know it because right here's our bylaw. Right here's what we go by. I don't have to check the bylaws as long as I'm preaching the Bible. But there's some people that go by their bylaws more than they go by the Bible. And boy, those bylaws, bylaws and church constitutions can get you in trouble. I like going by the Bible. Amen? Amen. So, there are people who say they got saved and then they live, they, they, they still live in a sinful lifestyle. We're going to talk about that here just a moment. You think about that. People who get saved, people say, I got saved, but I'm still living in a sinful lifestyle. Does that happen? Yes. It does happen. It does. It, it probably shouldn't happen, but it does happen. When that happens, the church should not accept those people in as members. When I say, no, we can't take somebody in, that's not, that's not because the rules of the church are so strict. It's because the Bible is so strict. There are just some people in lifestyles that, that don't match up to the Bible. As we keep going into the lesson, I want you to keep thinking about that. There's a difference and someone that sins and someone that lives a sinful lifestyle. There's not any of us that don't sin. People all, and you know, that's the argument I see today. I see they're, man, they're battling that on Facebook with the alphabet people and the trans train and all that, man. I'm, they're battling about what? There's no different my sin and your sin. I beg to differ, there is. I beg to differ, there is. There's a difference when you live in a habitual lifestyle of sin. You know, I talked about that a couple weeks ago. There's a big difference when you live a Christian, when you're a Christian and you live in a habitual lifestyle that's contrary to the word of God, then you've got a problem. It's not me. It's not the church. It's not the Bible. It's not the Lord. It's you've got the problem and you need to learn to grow and let God help you get through that issue. But there's a difference in somebody that sins and then somebody in a lifestyle of sin. Bill just came to the door. Had to go back. Probably didn't have his key. It's not, it's not loving. People say, we're living this day. You say, well, you know, we, we just need to love everybody. It's not loving when you accept people as members of the church in that case. It's not doing them any good. And it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt the church. Number one, it might, it might give them a false hope. I don't think I have to tell you this, but I will tell you this. Not everybody says they got saved, got saved. Everybody says I got saved, didn't get saved. So, uh, you know, we need to be careful. You know, people say, well, we ought to just take everybody in as members of the church. Well, by the time we get through this lesson, maybe you'll see my point and the Bible point of it. There's a purity and a godliness of a church. It should be kept as clean and pure as it can. The church is the bride of Christ. It's supposed to be a chaste virgin. We're supposed to be as clean and holy and, and live as clean, separated, as godly as we possibly can. Nobody should want to live in a lifestyle of sin, but they do. So when we say that, the purity and godliness of church, it, my job, now you say, you say, not my job, well, it is your job. You're a member of the church, but it's my job specifically, sometimes I just have to say no. You know, right now you're not able, you're not ready members of a church you say wow that, that doesn't sound very what's well, real loving because discipline is to correct people the, the problem we've got today is we let everything go you know we've, we've raised up two 
probably two generations of kids that don't even they they've had no discipline. So they don't they don't they don't have a clue what's right or wrong. And we've got people coming in the church and they say, Well, you know, I'm coming to church, you know, I'm I'm gonna be a member of the church, but yet they're living in one of these lifestyles that's contrary to the Bible. You say, Well, they say they're saved. Well, listen, I can say I'm a rocket scientist. When you get saved, you ought to live like saved people. There ought to be a desire to begin to go forward with the Lord and let Him work in your life to change whatever it is that needs to be changed. He's the great changer. Amen? So I realize that in this modern age we're living, that's not always the case. Ch churches are eager. Church attendance is all-time low in America. All-time low. You believe that? People are leaving the church. Young people are leaving the church. People are not joining churches. They're not coming into churches. So church members, pastors are sometimes too quick to take people in. Because they're really just trying to build up their offering plate and their church membership. And that's a problem. That's just stuff that happens. There is such a thing as church discipline. You don't hear much about that, but we're going to talk about it. If we get down to it today, we're going to talk about it. There are such things as church discipline. And again, church discipline is not to be harsh, to be mean, or to be unloving. It's just like it's just like your child. When your child does something wrong, you correct it. You correct it with the hopes that the behavior is going to change. You don't correct them to beat them or thump them. You know, you correct them hoping that, that discipline corrects the behavior. And it's not always a one-time deal. Sometimes it has to be over and over and over. So even though you say, I'm, I've never even heard of church discipline. Well, you will. Hang on. You will. Just a little bit. So, uh oh double slide there. You ask, well, what are we supposed to do about people in those lifestyles? That's a good question. That's a good question. What are we supposed to do with people who come into the church, people who get saved, Make a profession of salvation, but they're still living in, in lifestyles that's contrary to the What are we supposed to do with them? That's a really good question. I think, I think, I think we're trying to do the right thing here. Let me, let me tell you what I put. This is what I put. We're supposed to welcome them. We're supposed to be good to them. We're supposed to tell them the truth and allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. That's what we're supposed to do. Now there are churches that wouldn't do that. Man, there, there are churches. You've got you've got again with as with many things. You've got two extremes. You've got an extreme that's it's really so hard to get. You it's like nobody can get in. Then you got an extreme where well just anybody can get in. And I and I think both of those extremes are wrong. I think the right correct way to do it is to welcome people, love on them, preach to them, tell them the truth, tell them, what the, tell them what the Word of God says, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. If they've been saved, listen, if, if somebody's been saved, it's not any fun to live in sin. No. Now, I don't care what you say, you can argue that. It is not any fun to live in sin if you've been saved. The Holy Spirit's fighting against that. And He's pulling you. He's tugging and trying to pull you out of that. And you're pulling and tugging trying to stay in it. It's miserable. Those are the people who have the most miserable Christian experience. The people trying to play both sides. And, it, and it, isn't it a lot better just to jump in and say, I'm going to do what the Bible says. It really is. So when we... You know, again, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. Man, we want, as I said in the old mistake, we want everybody we can to come through that door. They might come in with psychedelic hair. And I mean, they, they might have the rainbow colors painted in their hair. I mean, they, I mean, listen, it, it's hard to tell what people might. I, I, I've said this for the last little bit. We have seen, I have seen, in the last six months, as, as many strange things as I've seen almost in 45 years. You say, why is that? Because we're living in the last day. We're living in crazy times. And whether you believe this or not, everybody that walks through that door is not going to look, act, and talk like us. They need some help. They need some loving on them. 
Man, when somebody comes through that door, you don't know. We, we had somebody not long ago that, that had been homeless. Am I right? Had been homeless. We, well, you never know that by looking at them. Begin to share that story. Begin to tell tell uh, Kathy and Carla their, their story and share with them. We don't know what people have gone through. There's a battle going on out there. Man, Satan is beating the snot out of people. And people are looking for a place where they can find refuge. So we don't want to stand at the door and, and, and have a checklist. Well, your hair looks good. Well, your body could use some work. Well, you, 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 you've got on the right dress. Or the, you, know, you got on that. Well, you, you don't have this on you. You don't. You, well, you got that. Wait a minute. Let me get my measuring stick out and measure and see how it Oh, come on. You said, does that really happen? It does happen. It does happen. I never, I never forget one that, one that at, at one school, I was, I was administrator at a high school. And when I went in and got my office and opened the drawer up, there was, there was a, 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 a tape, a, a ruler in my desk. And I said, what's that for? And they said, well, one of the administrators used to measure the girls' shorts and dresses. I said, well, that ain't going to be me. Man, I ain't, I ain't going up measuring, measuring, but I, but I've known preachers that were just as bad. You know, listen, we, I think we ought to dress respectable, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to have to harp on a dress code. I think we know what respectable dress is, but there may be people that come in from the outside that may not look as presentable as what you would want them to look. Are you going to X them off? Or are you going to give them a chance to let God work in their life? I want to give them a chance, amen? Because if the truth be known, we could go back and look in all of our lives. I bet there's some things in our lives that's not very becoming. And boy, I'm glad. You know, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the earth and the sun and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Wow. That's, the truth. That's the truth, isn't it? I want to, man, listen, I, try, I love people. In fact, I, I wish everybody loved people like I loved them. Now, I'm tough and I'm stern, and man, I preach dead straight right. Look you dead in the eye and preach you right straight, to, straight into it. But man, we got to love people. You got to love people where they are. You got to love people as they are. You want people to change, you got to love them as they are. So many people got that checklist. I don't, you know, I, I was talking to Sebby yesterday. I told you I was talking to Sebby, and he and I had a long time. And I told him, I said, I said, buddy, we're misfits. He said, we don't fit in with anybody, do I? I said, no. Well, I think we fit in with the Lord and with the Bible. But there are churches that, there are churches that wouldn't, let, uh, wouldn't allow me to walk through the door. Probably, probably some of the ones I pastored may not let me come back. But you know what? That's all right. But I want our church, I think what we've seen in the last six months, if you can preach the truth and you can love people and give God a chance to work in their life, you can see things happen. The last thing you want to do is get that, is get that, uh, get that, uh, uh, Rumor or something, or, or people gossip say, "Oh, you got to have this to go there. Or, you got to be so rich to grow go there." Somebody just telling the first lady today about what you know the pastor and the church going in checking their W twos and how much they made a year. What, oh, come on! I'm known to churches where they'd call your name off. You had to come. They'd call your name off for your ties in front of the congregation. You come up. You you come up laid on the table, and then they check your name off. Now, now, listen, that's stuff to the extreme. I'm not the Holy Spirit, and neither are you. <laughs> we want to, we want to, sadly, we want to take the Holy Spirit's role on. Our role is not, the, not that. Our role is to love people and be good to them. I guarantee you, if somebody gets saved, they're going to, they're going to start coming in the right direction. Amen. So what are we supposed to do? I, and I got hung up on that slide there. But we're supposed to welcome them, love them, be good to them, encourage them, treat them right, love them, man, do everything we can because we want them to live right. Amen? 
See, and I, I probably harped on that. You see, if a person has truly been saved, the Holy Spirit's going to work in them. I said that. So please, let me be clear. If you don't want to be a church member, we're not treat you any differently. We'll continue to love you and welcome you to our church. There's some people, some people told me the other day, said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm waiting on this church. I said, that's fine. That's fine. We don't pressure anybody into becoming a member. If you want to become a member, then we want you to become a member. If you live in the way the Bible says to live. But if you don't want to be a member, you can come and we're never going to say, well, well, John's a member and Pat's not. So we're going to treat Pat worse than we treat John. No. No. We're never going to bring that stuff up. We're never going to talk about that. We're going to treat Pat, and I'm just using y'all for an example. We're going to treat Pat and John exactly the same. That's what that's what a church does. Amen? I mean, that's what a church does. Just continue to love people and welcome them in. As I said before, getting, getting into church can sometimes be harder than getting into heaven when you got all these, all these other byproducts that they go by. And by that, I mean that some churches have so many rules and rituals and you got to go through and you got to, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to give this, you got to give that. Listen, let the Holy Spirit work on that. I found that's a whole lot easier to pastor a church if you let the Holy Spirit do His work. I tell you, I don't come. And, I'm not. I'm not going to get out in the middle of the night, and come peek in your be bedroom window to see what you're doing. That's between you and the Lord. That's not my role. Get shot that way. Get shot that way. Yeah, in this day and age, you get shot that way. But uh, you, you know, I'm just telling you. And we, sometimes we make it too hard. So I'm against all those add-ons. I'm against all those add-ons that churches have for membership, you know. I'm against that. I'm against that. Here's one requirement that a person needs to be a church member. That's the one requirement, saved. Amen. Now, again, let me say that. Now, when if you're saved, obviously that you wouldn't join a church that didn't believe like you do. I wouldn't go to church. Listen, I, I visit a lot of churches in Okeechobee when I can. I wouldn't, didn't want to be a member of them. In fact, I told you that I couldn't wait to get out the door. I wanted to run, hide, not go back. They give us a visitor's card. I said, no, I said, don't put, I don't put anything on that. I said, I don't want them to even know where I am. I don't want to have my number, my address. I don't, even, I don't want them to come visit me. So there may be people that come through the door the first time that feel the same way. You, you've had some experiences and, and you say, well, I don't want, I don't want to get, you know. In fact, there have been some people that signed the roll out there, the visitor's roll, and didn't put their phone number. And they were a little bit, I said, listen, all I'm going to do is send you a text to thank you for being here and, and let you know how much we love you and appreciate you and hopefully you'll come back. But, you know, like I said, the main requirement for church membership is that you be saved. A person is saved should live like a saved person. Jesus saves us out of our sin, not to stay in our sin. I think it's the missing point of the gospel that people leave out today. You, you, you say, well, you get saved. There's a fallacy to that. Get saved and just stay the way you are. No, no. Jesus loves you just as you are. He'll save you just as you are. But he loves you too much to leave you like that. He begins to do a work in your heart. Amen. And we need to allow him to do that. We're living in a day when many people say they got saved, but their lives are not yet living like it. No use to harp on that idea. That's one reason we don't, that's one reason we don't practice when a person is baptized, they automatically become a member of a church. Have any of you been in churches like that? Probably some of you. Yeah, and, and, and that's the reason I don't like it. There's a couple reasons. Number one, today, you don't know who you're baptizing. You don't know their life. You don't know what they're involved in. Number two, they may be just passing through. They may be visiting. They may, they may come and get saved and be baptized. They may, they may move on. Or they may not even want to join up with you. So why do I want to baptize everybody you baptize and say, well, you're, you're automatically a member of Freedom Baptist. And I don't want to do that. I want you to have freedom and liberty to make that choice, to make that decision. And if that's what you want, then yeah, then we're, man, we're happy for you. But if you've been saved and you don't, don't yet have everything worked out to where you can become a member, we want you to stay with us and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And you, people say, well, you know, Sometimes people don't always hear everything I say. Or you misunderstand it. Some people could pick up, 
take this lesson and pick it apart and say, well, he's saying he doesn't want us at church. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is if you've been saved and everything's not where it ought to be yet, stay with us. You're not going to get any help by going back out to the bar and the club. You ain't going to get any encouragement out there. You're not going to learn what the Bible is. You ain't going to go down on the bar stool and somebody come back and say, you know, this is what you need to be doing. No, you need to stay in. You need to stay in the church. You need to stay with us, and, and where you can hear what the word of God. The word of God is powerful, quick and sharp. It'll do. It'll, hey, it, it'll do. It'll do a lot better work than what you and I can do. Just preach the word, and just allow the Holy Spirit. If you if you really are open, the Lord will work in your life. Man, listen. I think the testimony is all over the house. Amen about that so th think about that we just want to show love and grace to those who are still growing and working on some things to become a, a church member that's what we want to do that's our role that's our job not to be mean not to be hateful some people may get saved and baptized i said that want to go somewhere else and that's fine people say, oh they're going somewhere listen if they truly got saved that's what counts i think sometimes we, 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 we as I said today, some of these preachers are going to be shocked when the Lord comes back because it's tearing up their little kingdom. Listen, we're, we're just part of the body of Christ. There are other, although we may not agree with things that other people do, there are still people out there that are saved. Amen. And other churches and other denominations and, and other things have truly been saved. So our part, our part is take care of what God's given us. Amen? I think, And that's a big enough job. So we don't practice church membership by baptism. If you want to become a member, please see me, and we can discuss it. So let me give you a couple of things. You ready? Can I give you a few things today? Talk about some reasons why church membership is important. I wish I'd have put these in a better order. I'm not going to lie to you. But I just kind of jotted them down as I thought about them, as I came to them. So they're, it, it, you said, well, that should have been up here, and that should have been over there. This should have been number one. There's no order other than my order that I just put them in. I, keep, I should have alphabetized them. It would have been even nice, but I didn't. So let me talk about a couple of things. Number one is connected. Why should, you, why should you be a member of a church, a local church, so that you can be connected? Connected. You know, you, know, you, know, you, can, have, you, can, have a, you can have a coffee pot, but if it's not plugged in, it ain't going to do you any good. You can sit and watch your blank screen on the TV all day. But if you don't plug it in, you're not, it's not going to do you any good. And it's the same way with being a Christian. When, you, when a person gets saved, they need to be plugged in. Man, wasn't it great to see that crowd Sunday night? Can you believe we had that many people out for communion? Wow. And a lot of these younger folks, I mean, new, new folks. Miss Grace made such a beautiful comment. A guy just think, thank you, Miss Grace, for that comment. Says one of the best communion services you've ever been in in your life. And, and I thought it was a great service. I thought God just blessed it re really good. But, you know, when you, when you think about that, that's why we want people to come and be plugged in. You need to be plugged into a church. And I, I, well, I use this word loosely, and I don't mean to use it loosely. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't have it in my notes. It just popped into my head, and that's bad. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't have anybody in mind when I say this, so don't think I am, but you need to be plugged in. John, what happens if you don't have a good connection? It arcs and sparks and burns and catches fire and burn your house down, burn your appliance up. You got, you got to be plugged in. People who, and again, has, don't take this personal. It's just a statement. People who church hop. You've heard that term? Church hop. Whether I'm going here this week. We've had some of them, you know, come back. Well, I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm going here. And I'm going. I said that's fine. If you want to come back, come on back. The doors are open. Church hopping is not going to get you plugged in. You need to be somewhere that can care for you. Somebody can watch over you. Somebody, when you miss a couple service, somebody's going to say, "Hey, what is something wrong? We missed you. Everything okay? If you're just hopping from church to church to..." There's no pastor that knows if you're, if you're supposed to be there or if you're not supposed to be there. So you're not, you're not plugged in. You're not connected. 
the best advice I can give anybody. This is why I said, why would you want to be a member of a local church? Because if you're plugged in to a place that wants to care for you, a place that wants to teach you, a place that wants to train you, a place that wants to love you, a place that wants to support you. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of a local church? I, I don't understand that. When a baby's born, they need a mama to take care of them and feed them. We got, well, I'm throwing a lot of bad examples out today. We got a lot of delinquents on the street because they haven't had very, very good training at home. And these kids that say, I raised myself, I can tell you how most of them turned out. You can tell by talking to them, I raised myself, you can almost tell by talking to them how they turned out. Kids don't grow, they don't develop if they don't have a, if they don't have a home di dynamics. I'm talking, they need a mom and dad, I'm just being honest with you. They don't need two men or two women, they need a mom or dad. Mom and dad together is what makes that unit complete and they need both of those in the home. And, and a child needs that to grow up and to be able to be able to be what God wants him to be. Now, I mean, God can save them to come out of a bad home life. That's happened all the time. Thank God for it. But the child that has the best opportunity is the kid that's been raised in the right environment. Yeah. Environment means a whole lot. Yeah. Environment means a whole lot. Environment, you, listen, you go in the school system, take you back. About 10 minutes to realize what kind of environment the kids come from. Am I right? Then take you long to look at them, listen to them. You say, wow. Then you meet your mom and dad, or their two moms, or their two dads, and, and, and nothing but profanity and vulgarity and threats and, 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 and things come out. You say, well, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. They used to tell us, remember this? They used to tell us, you, you can't say that anymore. You can't say that in school anymore. Well, dad gone, that's still the truth. And it's the same way in church with people who get saved. Imagine getting saved or a baby being born and just taken and laid down on the step and, and nobody's, nobody to feed it, nobody to care for it. It's the same way we're getting saved. This is, this is the place where people need to be. They need to be under the care of a local church. They need to be under care of a local home church that can love them and support them and be good to them. So, you know, you, I believe we got a lot of delinquent church people because they haven't been plugged into church. I believe the reason that Christ, many Christians never mature or grow is because they don't get plugged into local church. If you're visiting a church every Sunday, I don't know what you're getting. You go on here this week and there this week and there that week and that week and that in six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks you come back here. It's like a guy who'd gotten saved in our church one time years ago, and I always used this for an illustration. It was so funny. God had been saved and been saved a couple of months. He said, you never preach on the book of James. I said, son, you've been here about, about two months. You know. Probably the stuff you need, you're missing out of the sermon. People say, do you do counseling? I sure do. I do it on Sunday morning, Sunday night. Wednesday night, and Tuesday morning, and I'm gonna tell you what: if you'll get, if you'll be here and get that counseling, that'll just about to take care of everything you need in your life. If you'll listen to the Word of God and obey it and practice it, people say, "Why, well, you know, I need to sit down." Listen, I'm not opposed to sitting down with you, but sitting down with you, that's just bannering back and forth for days and days and weeks and weeks. If you're not willing to do what the Bible says when I'm preaching, wow. Wow. So I believe that's the reason a lot of Christians never grow or mature. They're, they're, they're baby Christians. I think the, wor the world's in trouble because we've got so many baby Christians. For the person that's serious, let me just say this. For the person that's serious about their Christian life, they should want to be a part of a local church. They ought to want to be a part of a local church. This is a place that's going to feed you. This is a place where you're going to get your spiritual, spiritual nourishment. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I don't know what you're going to get out there. there. I say this with the utmost kindness. There was a time in America when almost on every corner of every town, there were good churches. I mean, you could, I mean, there were good churches, multitude of churches. 
it ain't like that today. It just ain't like that today. I don't care what you say. It just is not like that today. So I don't know why a person wouldn't want to be a part of a local church. Number two, not only do we talk about, about, about connected, but number two, talk about commitment. Commitment. I think this is the reason people don't want to be a part of a local church. We're laxing on commitment today in a lot of areas. Would you agree with that? I mean, I, I mean, just think about that. And by becoming a member of a local church, it shows that you're committed to it. In a day of such lackadaisical commitment, and the world says, well, you don't have to be committed. Just go and just, you know, just, just float in and float out. Do what you want. Fly solo. You're not supposed to fly solo. That's not why Jesus gave us the church. He gave us the church so you don't have to fly solo. And I think it's a great witness to people when you say, well, I'm, I'm going to be a part of that church. That's my church where I want to go. That's where I want to take my family. That's where we want to grow. That's where we're going to be. And that's where we're going to learn the Word of God. I think it says a lot about commitment. Amen? Because we're living today when people don't, they don't want to be committed to anything. I mean, you can't. Man, don't get Big D started on it. You can't even get people to work today. Am I Right? I mean, they tell me they still have multitude, they still need multitude of people teaching and bus drivers and school starting tomorrow or Tuesday, Thursday. Pray for the school system. God bless everybody that's going back to school. Amen. But you can't even get people committed. I, I, it, well, I'm going to probably step on some toes and I don't mean to. I shouldn't meander around. When I was an administrator, the hardest job was, you know what, the hardest job was keeping teachers there to teach. Kids need that structured environment. Now, everybody has to be off. Everybody has to be gone. But when a kid has to face a sub every, every little bit, you don't know the kid and the kid doesn't know you. That's when I get called to the room. And it might be the kids come from a bad home environment and the sub knows nothing about it. And they come in there hard-nosed. Or they come in with no, no discipline whatsoever. The kids are climbing, hanging on the walls, hanging off the lights, pulling the, pulling the blinds down, running through the car. Ah! In the same way in church. I mean, you see that correlation? We need a, we need a solid, structured environment. And then you get that by being committed to the local church. You, you, you know, you know. I think of a people. So I don't want to be committed to a church, but yet, yet they're committed to a spouse. Well, not very good. But <laughs> when I think about that, divorce rate's pretty high. Yeah. But you know, they're committed to a spouse. You say I don't want to be committed, but when you go get a house, you you, you sign a long term commitment. You go get a car, that's a pretty long-term commitment anymore. Cars run 70, 80, 90, $100,000. You get a job, you ought to, you, you get a job. I like what Miss Glenn told me. Miss Glenn said, if I sign up, if I sign my contract to work for you this year, she said, I'm going to fulfill it. I loved it. I always loved that about Miss Glenn. If I, did, if I signed up to start, I'm going to finish with you. Now, there have been a lot of times through the year I wanted to quit. <laughs> but I hung on to the end. Amen. Which brings me to another point. I'm just harping on stuff this morning. Setting the stage here. There have been people who, through the years, not here, who through the years have gotten us involved in church buildings and church projects and sink you in debt and then say, well, that just, uh, that, man, that just infuriates me. You care enough to vote and tell me, oh, yeah, let's, bar let's borrow money to build a church and to get a building project. And then the next thing I know, you've hit the road. I told him, I said, you ought to sign in blood. You ought to sign in blood and then leave what you've got to the church when you die. If you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to vote to put a church in debt and then walk out that door. That's that commitment. This is your church. You have disagreements with people at home and your family. You have disagreements with people here. Every now and then, hey, we're people. We've got different personalities. We're going to rub each other. Yeah. We're going to say things. Everything that comes out of my mouth doesn't always come out the way I want it to come out. 
And generally when it doesn't, somebody goes, oh, I'm human. You're human. I give you the benefit of the doubt. Give me the benefit of the doubt. But if we're going to be committed to, to doing something for the Lord, for God's sake, don't vote to put a church in debt and then say, I think I'm going to go to the church next door. I just like to get a last song going. You can go, but leave me your pocketbook. <laughs> leave me the checkbook every month when the bill comes due. Amen. But so, you know, that, that commitment, man, people say, I'm, I don't want to be committed. In. You're committed to everything in life. You, you got to be committed to everything in life that you do. Maybe not very good, but committed. Amen. So by becoming a local church, but member of a local church, you're going against the crazy culture. The crazy culture says, no, you don't have to be a member. You don't have to be committed to stuff. Listen, there are organizations and clubs out here that you have to be a member of to participate in. But yet the church, you know, I don't think, I don't, I don't need to be a member. You really ought to give that some thought because it shows that, it shows that you found a home and you're going to stick with it. I love when people say, man, I want to become a member because it tells me they're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to stay with you for a while or until I offend them or hurt them or, or something, you know, and then they'll get mad. And they, Can I say this today? If I say something that, that rubs you or you, maybe you misunderstood, maybe I'm, have the dignity or the decency to come and talk to me about it. Somebody did that the other day, come pull me off the side and said, you know, you, you said something. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, that's not what I said. Well, that's what I heard. I said, well, that's not what I said. I said, this is what I, that's what you said. I said, that's what I said. I misunderstood that. I said, thank you for coming and talking to me. That's the way you do stuff. You, you, ever, mis you ever misunderstand something? That's my wife. Well, wow, something was going on either last night or this, this morning something. And I said something. She said, I've been talking to you about it for five minutes. <laughs> I said, really? Wow. Shock. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, selective here. I'm not hard of hearing. I'm tired of hearing. But, you know, you listen, you ought to find a place and be committed to it. So church membership's a way to, here, see if you like this. Oh, I was looking at that screen and thought my screen back there had gone black. I thought, oh, no, I've lost the screen. Church membership's a way to quit dating churches and marry one. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I mean, man, listen, it was nice dating. It was, it, listen, ask Big D and Kathy about it. It's nice dating. Man, they're, they're the honeymooners here. Yes, it's nice dating. Man, it's great to date. But I tell you, it, it, it ain't nothing like being married. Right. I mean, man, it ain't nothing like being married. Right. I mean, hey, man, buddy. I mean, I mean man, you, you, you know, think about that. Man, you date, you got to run here, run there, do this, do that. You just try, you know, it, 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 it's so much better when you're married. It's so much better when you're when you're married, and it's the same way with churches. Quit dating churches. Find you one. If this is not it, find you one and marry one and become committed to it. Amen. Amen. To really flourish, let me finish this right here. To really flourish and grow, you need to become you need to be committed to the local church. I'm not going back up on that. I'm not going to back up on that. To really grow and flourish and be what God wants you. I didn't have, I'm, I'm going to venture off again on a rabbit trail. God gave gifts, and we talked about that, did we not? God gave spiritual gifts for the edifying, for the building up of the body of Christ for the church. You're here, and God's given you a gift to use it. Use it. Get committed, join up. And be a part of it and use it. And you'll grow. The people who don't grow, many times are not committed. Many times they're not using their gift. Many times they're just sitting on the sideline and they're, and, and they're not doing anything. And, and you'd be much more happier by serving the Lord. There's a joy in serving the Lord. Are there heartaches? You better believe it. Are there disappointments? You better believe it. Do people hurt your feelings? Wow. Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I'll, sometimes I feel like I could bear in my body the marks of what people have said to me. But you know what? I still love the Lord and I still love people. And just because you don't like me or you ruffle me up, I'm not going to be mean to everybody else. 
I'm going to try and love everybody. And I want God to use me. I want God to use me. And to be used on the, nothing. Do you realize that the plan in the church age in which we're living today, that the plan is to, that ministry goes out from the local churches? It's not fly by nights and solo flyers out there. And I'm going to say this, and if this bothers you, you just have to get over it. You got a lot of these singing groups that they're not attached to any local church. They're not accountable to anybody. They're not, they don't have a place to take a, They're just out there. I'm, we're just out here doing our own thing. Man, I'd be careful about that. I'd be, if, if, some, if a preacher come through that door and says, I want to preach Sunday, I say, where do you go to church? I don't have one. Who's your pastor? I don't have one. What's the name of your church? I don't have one. I'd say, hit the road, Jack. Don't look back. You're not coming here to preach. No. You come here and be preached too. If we could get that concept, Jesus set the local church up to where you could be connected, that you could be committed, that you could be cared for, that you could be loved, that you could be fed, that you could use your spiritual gifts, that ministries, people say, what about these ministries? Look, I'm not a big fan of supporting stuff that doesn't happen from the local church. I just have to tell you that. He said, let's get involved. I don't want to get involved in it. This do, I don't want to do it. There's, there are enough things that the church can do if you want to get involved in things. Amen? I'm just being real honest with you. Playing this, I told you this lesson would really ruffle some people, and it, it probably already has. I don't mean to ruffle you. I mean to tell you, be, be a straight shooter and tell you straight. If you really want if listen, if you got saved and you're serious about serving the Lord, then you need to be plugged in. Yes. You need to be connected. It's, it's not meant to fly so low and go out there and just flounder around and just flop here and flop there and over here and over there and over here and over there. And then, well, you know, Sunday morning, I'm just going to stay in the bed. Sunday night, I'm, I'm just going to stay home. Something good on TV. And then, no. No, when you commit, hey, you know, I'm, I'm nosy. If it's, if it's going on at church, I want to be a part of it. If it's happening, buddy, I want to, I want, hey, I want to know. And I'm going to tell you something else. And I know we can't be there every time a door's open, but I'll tell you what it seems like. Every time you miss, you miss something big that happens. Amen. You say, wow, that happened? Oh, yeah. Man, you should have been there. Oh, man, I was watching my TV show. <laughs> oh, good night. I'm just telling you, man, I don't know of anything more, I mean, being a Christian, but when you put that together, being, being involved and, and, and a part of a local church body is great. I used to have people tell me, I'm going to try and close with this. I used to have people tell me when I was pastoring back home in West Virginia all those years, they'd leave home and move off and go somewhere and come back a year or two years. And I said, where are you going to church? Oh, pastor, I can't find anywhere to go. I used to think they were lying to me until we tried it. And when we started coming south, and man, we couldn't find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, old-fashioned church. I said, wow, these people have been telling me the truth all these years. All these, they're hard to find. God's doing a great thing here at Freedom Baptist. And we need to thank Him. And every day at 320, I hope you'll thank God for what He's doing. And just ask God to continue to do it and thank God that we're a man. I count it an honor to be a part of it. I've been, I'm saying, I've been in ministry for 45 years. It's one of the greatest, exciting things I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's one of the most, hey, we're in the prime of our life, Big D. I mean, I mean, I think about that. I mean, we're, 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 look, look at Bill Floyd back there. He's another, he's another grayback. We're all these grayback. Look, look at these graybacks here. And we're, we're just in the prime of our life, really. Because we're active in a church, and then we got people, these Stevens and, and Lorena's and, and the Todd's and, and, and the Shana's and the Justin's and the Shane's and, and Wanda and her daughters and all these younger people that are, that are coming in. Wow. Well, we ought to just say, you know what, instead of saying, 
You're not coming in here. This is my church. Man, you ought to open up with both arms and say, wow, what a blessing to have you here. Wow, when ki- these children's church kids who could be going anywhere, who could be doing anything that want to come to church, God help them. Help them in their honoriness. Help them in their routing. God help them. They want to be here. Love those folks. It'll make a difference, amen? And then you might you might find people saying, you know, I'm, I've been looking. That lady right there, and she's online right there today, Chris McNabb. Chris, I sent you a message. You didn't respond back. <laughs> Call you out right there. On the, uh, she, she probably sent me a message. I'm dropping out of the church today. <laughs> but no, Chris sat right there, and she said, hey, I've been looking for this. When you know what you, hey, listen, when you know a good meal and you sit down and you get it, you don't have to say well, I'm going to try it again. Maybe it was a mistake. No, no. She found something right here Sunday that, that people are looking for. And I've been saying that since we started this church. People are looking for genuine Christianity. They're looking for the real deal, and we need to provide that as much as possible. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you for being online. That's part one. I told you I thought I only had about 12, 13, 14 points, and I'm on, got to, I got to point two. But I spent a lot of time on the introduction. But I hope you'll come back next week and, and, and finish. I think it's important. I really didn't realize how important it was until the other day when I said something to somebody about membership. And they said, well, well why? And, and I thought, well, you know, that's a good question. And I thanked them and thanked them and thanked them. Because, man, I thought, man, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a reason why people ought to be a member of a church. And I'm, I gave you two of them today, connected and commitment. And, and next week, hopefully, we'll get into some more. Amen. Guys, we love you online. We appreciate our online people. And, man, you know what? Hey, thank God that we offer online membership. There, there was a time that that, that that wasn't even thought of, but through COVID and, and the craziness of churches today, the false teaching out there, there are people out there that can't find a good local church. And thank God they can be, they, they can be hooked up to us. And you said, well, it's not like being there. No, but I tell you, well, this is the next best thing. Ask Daniel Jenkins what, what's happened in his family if online ministry hadn't made a difference in his, in his life and in his family. Yes. Ask Phyllis. Phyllis in heaven today. Phyllis got saved online, but she's in heaven today. Ask her if it's important. So, yes, I think, well, I thank God for the online members. If you're here and around, you ought to be in church. If you can find your church, find you one. But if you can't, we're glad to try to help you, support you, and be a help to you. And but like I said, the COVID changed the dynamics of the church. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The church is not the building. It's the people. And as we gather together, they can gather on. They're gathering online right there this morning. And, you know, they, they're not here in person, but they're here. And, boy, I tell you, I, I, I found out through, through that online, man, the Holy Spirit can work. Man, I didn't think I could ever preach sitting down, but I found out I can. Man, I, hey, in fact, I almost got into the habit of it. In fact, I'm still in the habit of it. I may want to just get me a stool and sit down up there behind the pulpit. The older I get, I like it. But you know what? We're just trying to be a blessing to people. Amen? And we love our online people, man, and our online members and supporters. And we love you. And just just, just keep doing what we can do. Amen? Well, God bless you online. And we'll hop off and then we're going to close. Amen.